Hello, everyone. This is Eric Diaz with Marketing 110. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for joining us today. Today, I'm really glad to have Adam Clark with us. And Adam Clark, he's a senior paid media specialist at Danson's, which is an innovative grilling products manufacturer of Pit Boss Grills and Louisiana Grills and a number of other consumer products. Adam is an experienced marketer with a demonstrated history of working in the marketing and advertising industry. Adam is skilled in double click, digital marketing, ad exchanges, ad networks, and digital media and holds a Bachelor of Arts focused in communication from Cal State University, Long Beach. As a social media specialist at uh, Danson's, Adam has, been, Adam has been responsible for the following, managing organic social media for Pit Boss Grills and Louisiana Grills, creating daily posts for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as a, as a social voice of Pit Boss Grills and Louisiana Grills. Adam has worked with the video team to plan, edit, and execute original content for social media, He's also organized influencer and brand ambassador, social media content events, helped in the organization of marketing launch plans for new product releases. He's also planned, executed, and reported on various paid social media campaigns, supporting major retail launches, brand building, and D2C efforts across six brands. He has also attended on-site events as, as needed to capture content, supported on-site sales team, and assist in the setup and teardown of events. So join Adam today as we discuss his path to managing organic social media as well as paid social media for uh, growing uh, grilling products brands. So Adam, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. What's uh, t tell me a bit about that background there? That looks really cool. Is that uh, I, I think you've had <laughs> some news on social media. You've been posting some content about uh, recent sponsorships, right? Yeah. So yeah, um, we've been busy over here. Uh, definitely, we just got done with our biggest event um, of the year which um, I, behind me, this virtual, this picture behind me, uh, we actually sponsor a NASCAR race down in Texas. Um, we're the official grill of NASCAR that Boss Grills did. So um, I unfortunately didn't have, I didn't get to go this year, but I went last year. Um, we did the same thing. So um, we've been posting a lot about that. Um, we had a really cool ambassador event down there where we did a cookout, um, you know, like a grilling contest with a bunch of um, of our ambassadors cooking and judging and doing all that fun stuff. And it's just trying to, to, to build a great community. Um, you know, we're big on barbecue as a community. Um, I'm sure everyone, you know, has been to a barbecue in a backyard or wherever, um, or tailgate. And that's what we, tr the lifestyle we really try to capture, um, wherever we are. So, um, and then yeah. obviously cooking great food too. So that always helps. <laughs> of course. So, um, so yeah, tell me, so you've recently made a move uh, in your, in your mm -hmm. company. Tell me about what were you were doing and, and uh, I guess your new role. Sure. So um, I'll just give you my quick career rundown here at uh, Danson's because they, they kind of intertwine. So I was hired on to at um, Pit Boss Grills to build out our paid social media. Um, so Facebook ads and Twitter ads and, you know, all, all basically every platform you can think of. Um, I was hired on to do that as part and join the social media team here. Um, oh gosh, almost three years ago now, uh, June of 19, I guess. Um, and then kind of, you know, learned how to do organic social media just from watching um, the people on my team do it um, and was asked to take on Louisiana Grills as a brand to run their um, organic social media along with doing all the paid social media for the entire company. So I'm um, definitely busy, but uh, once I got my feet under me, um, I kind of, I call it a promotion. I got um, uh, our company kind of split off into two different directions, and I stayed on the social media team and and was given Pit Boss Grills um, to run that that big global brand um, social media. So um, that was a really exciting time um, in my career. Um, I did that for about a year and a half. Um, you know, managing a big brand like that right out of the gate, it's, it's, it's a accomplishment of mine. So I was really happy. Um, then an opportunity opened up about, uh, two months ago, a month and a half ago to move back over to the paid side. Um, but do all of our, not only paid social media, but also, um, our Google search, um, and any, basically any platform we're running ads on, I'm, I'm in control of now. Um, and also doing email um, marketing and um, SMS text message marketing as well. So I got my hand in a lot of stuff over here. 
Um, but I like it that way. I like to control it also. Our campaigns are really cohesive and, and look the same and feel the same no matter what channel is putting it out. So that's where I'm at right now. That's so, great. Yeah. Um, what, I had a question that came in from one of our uh, uh, one of the students, and his name's Kevin. Kevin asked, how would you describe your position as, and, and he's asking about the social media marketing specialist. So mm -hmm. how would you describe this position? What different, uh, differentiates this from being an account manager? Sure. So, um, so a, it's a unique position to be in um, when you're in charge of a brand's social media um, because, I, I always view it as, you know, the brand isn't mine. I don't own it. Um, and here we're, we're a big family company. Um, Danson's is, a, is family owned and a private company. So um, I was just really the voice of, of the brand um, and the curator of, of, I'm sorry, I was like the curator of the voice of that brand. So I was really in charge of finding um, content that fit our voice. Um, and our lifestyle and what we wanted to portray on social media um, as a company, but it's not mine. It's everyone that works here. So anyone that had an idea for social media, we would take that in um, and kind of see if it fit into our game plan um, for how we were running it. Um, you know, obviously I had the final say in what went out online. Um, one of the biggest things that you, you got to wrap your head around is, um, seven, whatever, how billion people, how many people are in the world that have access to Instagram can critique my work. <laughs> <laughs> um, because everyone, we're a public brand. Um, so you can see anything I do and any little mistake I make. If there's a typo, you know, hundred, you know, you could get people being like, you're an idiot, you know, why'd you write that or whatever. So, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of, realize that and be really careful in what you write. Um, and differing from account management, I think in a past life before here, I, you know, I worked for a company that managed brands ad accounts. And so I was the account manager of those ad accounts, but it wasn't, it was like a step removed from the brand. So it wasn't as personal to me, um, even though I took it very seriously and wanted them to be successful, but here working for a brand I really believe in um, it's it's um, you take it more personal like it's your brand you know you have a lot more buy-in because you're making decisions that can affect the lives of a lot of people I mean if I write something on social media everyone knows like you can get really uh, you can get in trouble for what you write on social media so if a brand's putting out a bad message that I wrote like it's you know it's my fault and, and it's the brand's going to suffer so um that's a, that's a big difference right there yeah no great point um so at, in the social media marketing specialist position how do you measure success for the brand say that again sorry someone teams me <laughs> <laughs> no worries uh how do you measure success in that position for a social media marketing specialist yeah so we measure it in a couple of different ways um Obviously, we're trying to sell products, so that's that's one. Um, moving product through our shop and and selling grills and whatnot. Um, and the other one that we really focus on is engagement. Um, you know, we're not we have a decent amount of followers. I think it's up to two hundred and eighty two thousand or something like that on Instagram, um, and you know, fifty thousand on on um, TikTok and all that. Um, but it's all about you know making sure that the users that you have are engaged um, and engagement drives new users to follow you. Cause if people are liking your stuff and sharing it and, and saving it on the platforms, then it allows the algorithm to say, Hey, this brand's pretty relevant. Um, let's show it to also new people. So, um, you know, follower growth is great, but we want, we want to grow followers that want to follow us, not just a cheap follow that we, paid for, you know, stuff like that. Like we want actual followers that are gonna engage with our brand and ultimately buy a grill or buy something, buy a spice or whatever. So right. um, that's the ultimate goal is to, to get people to buy your product. Is there, um, as far as engagement uh, metrics, is there any specific metrics that you guys pay attention to? Yeah, so um, organically we paid attention to a lot of, um, what was, video a lot of video view um who's you know who's viewing our stuff 
Um, and then a lot of saves and shares were the, the, the big new metrics that are out there in, in the social sphere. Um, it's not so much about like double tapping a pick or, or that anymore. It's about, did people save it? Did they share it? Um, those are the big metrics we look for. Um, so we try to, we try to send out shareable content and, and recipes and stuff like that, that people are going to save and come back to later. Um, that's the ultimate goal. Um, you know, you want, we want to send out usable content. I mean, there's always a place for like a cool pick of a, uh, in our world, like a huge burger or whatever that people love, but um, we want to send out usable, like we want people to use our content or like come back to our content to use it uh, and, and, to, and to share it with their friends and family and whatnot. Um, you know, that's, that's a good point. Can you um, tell us a little bit more about the, the products in particular? So I know about the, the grills, but can you talk, talk more about the other products, uh, product lines that you guys sell? Sure. So um, Pit Boss Grills is, way beyond just grills now um you know we're known for our pellet grills which is uh, you know a, a wood fired grill um that that the fuel is like these little pellets that are like this big um we also have griddles which is like you know a flat top um kind of restaurant style um gas gas grill essentially um we have fire pits we have apparel we have spices we have sauces um trying to think tools like any, we're basically a one-stop barbecue shop um to to sell pro barbecue products um and to and to get people to buy all pit boss products like we want your entire backyard to be decked out in pit boss um and if it's not um look at our higher end brand it's louisiana grills um pit boss is our bell cow but louisiana grills is like our um if pit boss is our toyota then um Louisiana Grills is our Lexus level brand. Like it's a little bit higher end. A um, couple more bells and whistles in there. It's built a little, little heavier, a little sturdier. So, um, but it, it it comes at a higher price point. So, you know, you pay for it's not super high, but it's higher. So, mm -hmm. um, that's how we we kind of differentiate them. And that's mostly a grill company, but we have spices and sauces over there too. So we want to be, you know, anything you can do them cooking or barbecue we want to provide some type of tool to be able to pull that off that's great so. that's great um we'll talk a little bit more about content uh how much of the content either for louisiana or pit boss mm -hmm. how much of it is original versus either uh or um like uh user generated content content or influencer content yeah so um for pit boss i would say it's right now it's probably 50 50 um We've always been, uh, in the past, we, it was really, really generated by user-generated content. We, we pulled a lot of user-generated content um, to, to run our Instagram. And partially was because we just didn't have the bandwidth to create a lot of content. And bigger than that, we wanted to be the brand that if you cooked on our products, whether you had five followers or five million followers, if you cook something good on our products, uh, we wanted to show it off. Like we wanted to build a community around your, the, our, the people who own our grills food and their grills and how they live their lifestyle with their pit boss grills. So um, we're kind of known for that in the industry as being the, you know, if you have the grill, like, and you post a cool pic and we see it or a cool video, we're going to ask if we can repost it um, and people get a kick out of it. I mean, I mean, I would love it if some of the brands I follow were like, hey, we saw your photo, like, can we re feature it on our Instagram? Um, that's pretty cool, it's, you know. And like I said, if you take a really cool pic and you have five followers, we don't care, um, we're gonna feature you. It doesn't, you know, and it shows a sense of community um, that way. Um, now, with, the, with um, a few, you know, a few new hires and whatnot, we have the bandwidth to create our own company, or sorry, our own uh, content here um, mm -hmm. in house. Um, we just recently moved into a building that allows us to shoot outside and and um, you know make some really cool content. Um, we have a chef on our social media staff now that um, all he does is make really good recipes, um, really killer recipes um, that we get to post and eat the food. So it's, it's mm -hmm. a good it's a good gig to have. So um, <laughs> yeah. And the way the way social media is going with the use of video, it's necessary to make your own content. Um, 
nowadays. So um, it's a little bit longer process, but it's way worth it. Do you um, do you also work with like um, paid ambassadors as well, or or uh, was it mostly just like uh, you just lo- smaller, smaller? No, ones? no, we have a pretty extensive roster of paid ambassadors. Um, you know, a lot of barbecue pit masters, all the way up to um, like Marty Smith is one of our ambassadors, who's an ESPN personality. Um, trying to think we have a NASCAR driver since we're in the sport, we sponsor a NASCAR driver, Eric Amarola, um, Willie Robertson, who was on duck dynasty is one of our ambassadors. Um, trying to think of the other ones blanking, but you know, we have, we have a pretty extensive list. Um, one of the things we've always done and when, you know, if some of you guys go into the social media space is, um, we're really careful with the ambassadors we sign. Um, we want them to be part of the company. We don't want them to be like one and doneers. Um, so we don't sign any one and doneers to do in like campaigns for us. Um, you gotta be part of our community and want to be part of the brand. Our, our ownership takes that very serious. And I think it's really important. Um, we don't want people jumping ship to be like, all right, this week I'm pit boss next week. I'm Traeger the week after that I'm Weber. Like we want you to be part of pit boss family for a life if possible. So we, t- we take that really serious when there's more bringing on new ambassadors, um, even the paid ones. I mean, I think Willie Robertson's been with us for three years um, and, and is super happy. So it's always good to find those people that are, uh, you know, we all know commercials out there where you, you recognize the quote unquote commercial celebrity, <laughs> you know, think Jake from State Farm, like if he just jumped over progressive next week and then went to Geico the next week, you'd be like, what's going on, man? You're the yeah. State Farm guy. So <laughs> that's what we try to build, you know? <laughs> um, a right, question for you. This is also from Sarah in the class. She asks, is it challenging to find customer content to repost that fits the brand voice? No, um, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, we, uh, we're lucky with pip off that we're a big brand with a lot of grills out there and a lot of people willing to share what their food looks like. So um, that one's easy. Louisiana grill is a little more challenging. I will say um, sometimes we got to put word out there to be like, Hey, we're looking for more content. Um, you know, now with us creating a lot in house, it's gotten a little easier to do that, but um, there were challenges where we were like, man, I don't know what I'm going to post today or post <laughs> next week. I, I can't find any content. So we have a we have a pretty decent roster of also free call them free ambassadors that don't get paid but we give them product and stuff that we can always mm-hmm. reach out to um, to be like hey would you mind shooting some stuff this weekend or are you cooking this weekend shoot, can you shoot it um, and they're always more than willing because we'll send them stuff we, you know we give away a lot of free free swag and whatnot so um, they're they're all about it um, but yeah for pit boss it, it sometimes it's a flood of content where it's too much. You got to figure out which one actually speaks the best to the brand voice. Right. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, some other questions about the, about the job. So mm-hmm. uh, question that was submitted was, uh, does the job get easier as time goes by? And that's in relation to social media specialists. Um, yeah, it does. I mean, there's definitely a learning curve um, to figure out like, you know, how to write, the content, how to shoot the content, how to edit the content. Here, here, um, the social team, excuse me, is responsible for um, shooting our content, editing our content, and um, you know, writing the the caption or whatnot across social media. So we're we're actually responsible for a lot of things um, here, which is unique to to our company. I think um, where we we you know we use. Um, the Adobe suite to do a lot of editing and whatnot. So um, it does get easier, but it also, there's always a challenge when, you know, a new platform comes out. Do you want to go on it? Do you want to be first? Like those business decisions have to be made. Um, We're late to the game on TikTok just because the ownership was wary of what TikTok actually was. Um, And then when we got on there, just hit the ground running, stuff like that. you know, dealing with the challenges of the algorithm of each of each platform is is always a daily challenge. But um, as long as you're confident and knowing what you're trying to portray on Instagram and you're authentic to that that message and that life you're trying to portray, 
um, it gets easier. And then you, it, sometimes it's a little autopilot, but there's always a challenge you got to look out for. And you always got to be prepared for those, um, those challenges. But as long as you know you're confident in what you're writing and confident in what the, your brand, if you know, you're starting a brand or the brand you work for or want to put out there, it, it, it's fun and it's easy. Um, I think. Yeah. Um, one last question about, uh, just basically the day-to-day -day work is, mm -hmm. uh, what have you learned from, from working, uh, with a food product brand such as that Danson's what, what satisfies your stakeholders the most in regards to content creation? Um, they like to be given things. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, you know, we get a lot, you know, they, they love, we create a lot of recipes and a lot of unique, semi-unique food items that they can try. Um, people love seeing unique, uh, new products come out in, in unique ways. Um, that's always a big hit for us. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is, you know, big food and, and how did you make that? How, where do I get the recipe for that? Um, you know, you always kind of want to give your users something, something they can take away. And it doesn't happen with every post. I mean, we post two or three times a day. So it's hard to, it's hard to give them something every time. Sometimes it's just about, Hey, we're selling like the other day, it's like national pet day. And we're like, Hey, here's pictures of dogs next to their grills. Like it's natural pet day. We're celebrating. Mm -hmm. um, but then even then people are like, Hey, that's my dog. Like, it's cool. So um, yeah, stuff like but on that. average, do you guys post like two to three times a day? Yeah. Average is about two to three times on pit boss grills um, a day. And that's across, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, we probably post four or five times a week on TikTok, um, and and a you know once or twice hopefully on YouTube. Sometimes a little less, but you know that initiative will come down from the top, and then we'll be posting on there a ton too. So, um, you know, we produce a lot of content um, coming out of this building. Gotcha. So. And then uh, uh, just general uh, questions about social media. Um, not ne doesn't necessarily have to be about Pit Boss, but it can be. Um, okay. What is some, this is a question from Mirka in the class. So she sent in, what is something no one tells you about the marketing and advertising industry before you join it? I saw that question um, and was trying to formulate an answer. Um, I would say a lot, you know, you think about a lot of the, what I've learned is a lot of it is collab, collaboration um, and, 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 and going with your gut um, and then testing out. So I'll touch on two of those separately. So um, we do a lot of collaboration with other brands here and a lot of collaboration internally um, on projects that we work on. And it's really, I think it's really important both sides. Um, to, brand strength is always good when you're partnering with other brands that are, you know, kind of match your, match your lifestyle. So, you know, we partner with like, we partner with Coca-Cola and we partner we don't, have, uh, we partner with Bush, Bush beer, Bush light or whatever it is on Bush, I think, um, you know, with NASCAR and stuff like that, Smithfield, which makes sense. It's a, it's a meat brand. So it just makes sense to collab. And then internally, um, the collaboration between like marketers is always great because everyone has ideas and it's, it's all about finding the right idea. Um, and if it's not your idea, just check your ego at the door and be like, all right, it wasn't mine this time, but I'm, you know, I'm not offended by that. Mine wasn't chosen. Like that's a, that's probably a big thing is, you know, make marketing is a, a team effort. Like everyone has their own opinion and, and uh, life experience that goes along with it. So you might be like, Hey man, like, I really think this is going to work. Um, and, and the group might be like, yeah, you know, it doesn't really fit exactly what we're doing. And if you can just be like, all right, cool. Like we'll do yours, you know, and next, maybe next time is your idea. And there's no scoreboard in the office of marketing to be like, well, Adam had a great idea. He's had four and Eric's had none. Like, it just doesn't matter as long as everyone just gets on the, in the same boat and rows at the same direction. That's what we, people like to say here. So, um, and then I forgot the other thing I said. Sorry, I apologize, but um, oh. collab collab is big um, here, um, and, and across I think all marketing and, and all all the jobs you're in. Um, oh, the other thing I I was gonna say is um is 
don't be afraid to like ask for help and questions. Like, I think that's really big. No one, you know, a lot of people are afraid to ask question because they think it's a stupid question. Um, and I've, I'm a big believer in there's no stupid questions. Um, because if you don't know the answer, but it's imperative that you do, and you never ask the question, you're, you're going to actually hurt more than you're going to do good. So just ask the question. Um, I, we, I believe that the only stupid question is if you've asked the question a third time the same way, <laughs> which means you're not learning, but it, there's no dumb question. Like literally people say that it's cliche, but it's very true. Um, just ask questions and, and find the answer out and then proceed um, with the project or whatever you're working on. Um, and if it's unclear, ask. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, good yeah. advice. Um, next question, this is also from Mirka. I think she's talking more like in regards to like trends, but she asks, is there any innovative new marketing strategy you have seen or heard of? Um, the biggest what's one, trend, What's trending in social media? It, yeah. You know. Um, the biggest thing right now is, is video. Um, you know, TikTok's taken over the world of social media and all of the other platforms have followed along. Um, and it's not even just video anymore. It's like you got to, the biggest marketing trend I see within the video is, do I have your attention within one and a half seconds? Um, we all, I, I'm sure everyone there, majority has a TikTok or, or scrolls through Instagram reels or whatever. And like, if it doesn't interest you in two seconds, it doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't matter if the video is 15 or a minute or how much work you put into it. If you miss a person in two seconds, um, you lost them. Um, so that's the big, that's a big marketing trend. How do you capture someone's attention to care about your brand in two seconds or less? Like, <laughs> two seconds is an eternity when we're watching you know flipping like this on our phone um how, how do you capture attention um and that that's the other one too is the another big trend is how do you get people's attention um on their phone um because everyone is on their phone nine i think 95 percent of our traffic to our site is on a phone hmm. um and so that's that's the big thing is everything needs to be designed for a phone um and usable on a phone and if it's not then it's 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 almost worthless you said 95 percent of your traffic is on the phone yep wow. yep so yeah okay yeah. yeah um michael if you've got questions I'm, I'm gonna ask one more and then uh see if you got any questions um so a lot of the as i mentioned a lot of the students in the class um are either thinking about ideas that they may launch or um, are, are actively doing them. So we have some entrepreneurs in the class. So one of the general questions I get is um, any advice to a small brand or company when it comes to managing and setting up their social media platforms? Yeah, I'll give three little pieces. Um, hang on, I'm going to write them down so I don't forget this time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, give me one sec, sorry. Sure, yeah. Uh, Uh, that's probably, probably wrapping up both those. Um, the first one is be prepared to post a lot. <laughs> um, I'm a big believer in posting a decent amount of times. Um, if you, you know, you look at your stats, um, you might, you might, like we have 280,000 followers and like we get 50,000 people seeing our posts. Um, that means 230,000 of our followers aren't seeing our posts. It's just the way the algorithm works. So you want to be able to hit people when they're online um, with, with content. So, and make sure they're seeing it um, and, and make sure it's, it's relevant. Um, and, and, and within that posting, um, test things out um, when you're getting started to, to find your, what your brand voice is, um, which is really important. And when you find it or you know what you want it to be, this is what we want to portray. Um, stick with it and like find the users that that um, that resonate with that message that you're putting out. I mean, there are what, I don't know, a million t-shirt companies out there 
there's, you know, we have, we compete against, you know, 50 different grill companies and we're all competing for you to buy a grill in your backyard. Um, and you and spend your heart like our product is not cheap like we're asking people to spend you know 500 to a thousand dollars um to put something in their backyard um you know so just keep that in mind like find your voice find what works for your brand you can always tweak the voice but um you know when you're you're like this is what i believe in this is what i want our brand to portray like stick with it and see how it works out and and find those users that really want really want to engage with your brand and, and support your brand evangelists are great so if you can find a few evangelists like it's free money it's free advertising like mm -hmm. when they start posting your stuff that's free advertising because their your network's getting that much bigger um when they show their friends your brand like hey i i really like this like this hat company, like check out this dope hat I'm wearing and they tag you like people, you might get one person exploring and then your network just got that much bigger. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Like, you know, post a lot, be prepared for the work. It's not as easy as you think. Um, putting out high quality stuff, you know, you gotta have the right tools, a really good phone, you know, um, the Adobe suite always helps <laughs> for mm -hmm. editing, um, find a good editing software. Um, and, you know, just remember like a brand is, a brand is cool. Um, a lot of people love following brands, but they all put out high quality content. You know, there's a difference between me shooting my son, you know, playing in a soccer game and it's like kind of grainy and the family loves it. I'm never, I would never post that on a brand page, you know, like it's gotta be really high quality stuff, you know, uh, and that's really important. Um, and it, it's a lot more work than, than you think it is. That's probably one thing I've learned. Um, and, and, and I've also had to teach people like you guys and even people that work within the building, like, Hey man, it's not like you're shooting and you're just posting it up. Like there's a reason why your photos don't look that great. <laughs> you think it's easy and, you know, we got to run it through editing machines and filters and stuff like that. So yeah, post a lot and find your voice. That's what I, that's what I'd say. Um, and stick to it. Yeah, no, it's great. And don't um, give, the other thing too is don't give up. Like, don't, like, if you really believe in it, don't give up. Um, I thought about this before it started. I was going to say, um, we've had posts here that we're like, this one's going to kill it. And it like did horrible. Like we put a lot of work into it and it did horrible. And then the next post of like some random thing cr just crushes it. And you just, it's like, what just happened? Right. So you, you just never know, like, but don't give up on, on what you're trying to do. Um, it, it, it'll eventually break through. I mean, like I said, there's 7 billion people or whatever in the world or however many people like you can find followers that like your brand and, and will buy into your brand. Definitely. Um, one last question about general social media. I'm going to move on to the mm -hmm. final section about uh, just careers, any career, uh, career guidance you have. Last question about social media. Uh, are there, you mentioned tools. Are there any other social media tools that you recommend, whether it be editing software or social media, either analytics, listening, uh, posting software, anything that you recommend? Yeah, so um, we use some tools here. Um, you know, there's ones like, uh, I'll just name a few off and then you can always find offshoots of them. So like Sprout Social is a big one. Um, we use Social Bakers to do our analytics. Um, Hootsuite is another one. And these are all scheduling and analytics software that we use to run our social media. Um, uh, so we can, we can plan out like what our, you know, next six weeks to three months is going to look like on social media before it's actually posted. Um, and then it also does analytics, a deeper dive than what Instagram gives you, um, within their platform or Facebook's pretty good in their platform. I, Facebook's in-house platform is actually not that bad, but, um, it's nice to be able to, to post, um, in one platform across multiple channels. Um, and then like, I think I've mentioned a few times, but the Adobe suite is always really good to use, um, for editing and whatnot. I think they have a free mobile app. I think Lightroom. The Lightroom. Yeah, I think there's something called a Adobe Express now, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a lot of use out of those um, for video and photo, um, stuff like that to edit um, 
and they work great. Um, even, I mean, shoot, even the iPhone, the new iPhones are good. <laughs> they have yeah. a lot of tools within them too. So uh, <laughs> stuff like that, but yeah. Okay. Um, so, so just a couple of questions about career wise. So tell us first of all, so a lot of these, um, a lot of our students are, are thinking about getting their first professional job and mm -hmm. always love to know, like, how did you get in with uh, dancing? Sure. So, um, it's been a long road. Um, I started in digital media in 2008. Um, and, but in dancing, I, you know, I, I've been watching this company for a while. I was at a company called Saiba, which was a performer performance marketing agency, um, before this, um, and saw dancing as it posted a few jobs and I was already into barbecue. Any, I, I love to cook, um, in my backyard. Um, and so, this job came up and I applied and, and luckily they called me. I went the old fashioned way of just applying for a job and, and they called and, um, you know, they're, you know, here they're very family um, oriented and I owned a grill, which helped me, you know, I, I kind of fit the culture they were looking for. Not that everyone owns a grill here, but um, I did. Um, and then uh, I did a lot of research on the company as much as I could find on the site and wrote down a few, few buzzwords that I thought the company cared about and kind of worked them into my interview, um, or tried to do it organically. Cause, um, when you do that and you're not just like, you know, saying buzzwords just to say them and you actually kind of work them in it, it, it triggers a lot of the, the people you interview with to be like, Oh shoot. Like he did his homework. Like that's one of our keywords and it just fits or, you know, fits nicely into what you're saying. So, um, that's how I got on here. Um, back when I first started in the digital space, um, in 08, it was literally one of those, um, who, you know, situations. <laughs> so I actually, um, uh, went golfing with a guy and his, his wife worked at, a company um, and she was looking to hire, they were looking to hire someone that was entry level in that space. Um, and I was like, well, I think I can do that. Here's my resume. And basically it was just a couple of bartending jobs and whatnot. And I was fresh out of college, but I was like, I think I can do that. Um, and I, she's like, okay, I'll get you an interview. And I got it um, and I got the job. So pretty stoked on that. Um, it was, I mean, it was entry level, which is great. I mean, you got to start somewhere. Right. Um, and yeah. And to that, I'd be like, don't be afraid to ask. Like, if you think you can do it. So if they say no, okay. So you're right where you were before you asked the question, at least you asked it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, don't be afraid. If you see something you want to do, be like, Hey, I think I can do that. How do I get in there? Um, and they're like, well, we don't think you're qualified. Be like, all right, well, how do I get qualified then? always have another question ready to go. Um, there's no, no harm in that. Um, a genuine person will answer that question. <laughs> so. And speaking of which, Adam, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to share your LinkedIn bio with uh, the folks. Yeah. The, class. They're all, most, the majority are going to watch this video later on. So don't be surprised if you get a couple uh, requests. I hope, I hope you do anyway. No. Yeah, please. If you guys, um, like Eric said, if you guys want to reach out, just let me know. Hey, I heard your uh, heard you from the class. Uh, I'm more than well willing to answer any questions or offer any of my advice. Um, I can. Um, and if I don't know the answer and you have something out the realm, I'll I'll hook you up with someone here that knows the answer or um, say, hey, I think you should talk to this person. Um, so um, I mean, that's how Eric and I know each other. <laughs> You're networking, yeah, so <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, Got, I've got a few last questions and we'll just wrap mm -hmm. for the day. But um, so, yeah, what's what's next for you? Uh, obviously, you've had a great, great run with, with dancings. What what, uh, what would you say was, is next for, for you and your career? Um, to be honest, man, I'm I'm 41 years old. So if this is it, I'm more than happy um, right now. I'm I'm planning on riding this until the wheels fall off, really. Um, I'm in a really good spot. I really, really, really believe in this company. And I really like it a lot. So I don't see myself going anywhere for a long time. Um, we're still growing there. You know, we're in this unique position where we're, we're a really successful company, but sometimes it feels like a startup around here. So there's always something to do. Um, uh, and probably more 
more to do than is possible um, mm -hmm. in a day. So um, yeah, man, I, there's a lot of opportunity that could come up here. Um, like, you know, I just moved roles, you know, in a year I could be moving to another role. I mean, we have, you know, we're involved in so much stuff that um, it's like taking a new job, but you're in the same company with, you know, you just move cubicles or move offices. So, right. um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm more than willing to retire here <laughs> if they'll, if they'll keep me on. So <laughs> how's, uh, how's working. So working for a company that people have heard of, how has that affected your career? Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I always wanted to work for a brand, um, coming from where I came from, you know, working for people who work for brands, you know, being two or three steps away from the brand, um, and working for a brand that people have heard of. It's interesting because you, um, we're heard of, but we're not, you know, everyone knows who Traeger is. That's our biggest competitor. Um, so we're always fighting that battle of no, we're not them. Like, this is what we do. Um, but it, it's fun. I mean, it's cool. Like this thing behind me that was on the ground at a NASCAR race, you know, and you wear the shirt or wear the hat around and people, you know, want to stop and talk to you, you know, I get a hit up a lot for discounts. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause you know, um, stuff like that. So, but it's cool. I mean, I, it, it's good to know like the inner workings of the company and what we believe in. It's cool that people recognize it. As, as a good a good company and, and a quality product that's the biggest thing is people love our most people love the product they get um and you're a small small part of that which is it's it's good it's, it's a good feeling to have that's great all right uh one final question i had for you and mm -hmm. so as i mentioned a lot of students uh will be graduating to getting their associates or moving on to uh to transfer to um to a four-year university um but very soon they're gonna be looking for their first professional job so mm -hmm. any final advice uh you would give to someone that's gonna be looking to get their start in the marketing industry um yeah a few things one uh don't think you're gonna make a hundred grand out of the gate <laughs> um i think that is something i've learned um with people that are current you know there's these delusions of grandeur that you know i'm gonna make tons of money out of the gate like you just got to figure it out and take what best opportunity is out there um and don't be you know if uh it's kind of like going to college like you have maybe a couple places you really want to go to and if you don't get it like don't you know always have them on your radar but like take it take something that's going to teach you take a job that's going to teach you something you never know you just never know i mean i i took a job at a hearing aid company because i needed a job um, I got laid off from a job and they offered me a job and I learned how to do things there that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't have taken that job. Um, so you just never know what's in the inside. Um, and if you hear a no or hear rejection, one of the things, especially when you're first starting out, um, if you get through an interview process or, you know, you, you find a good person you're talking to, um, and let's say you don't get the job, don't be afraid to ask why you didn't get it. Um, a, a lot of the people, especially if they're, I mean, unless you just flat out blow it, which, you know, I'm sure Eric can talk to you guys about like everyone's blown an interview. Right. But, uh, <laughs> um, but if you, you know, you go in and you're like, man, I really kill, I really killed that. And, and they write you and they're like, Hey, like, unfortunately we're going to go in a different direction. It always thank them say a hey, thank you for the opportunity, you know, keep me in mind, like if something else pops up, but you can always ask, hey, well, like what kept me from doing the job? Like what kept me from you choosing me as the hire? Um, and, and a lot of, you'll find a lot of genuine people will answer that question. Not only that, um, they might be a mentor for you later. I've had a few interviews that I didn't get that I connected with the person on LinkedIn and we still talk to this day. Um, so you never know, how the, you know, it might not be that person's decision that didn't hire you. Um, you just never know. So um, make connections quick. Um, even if, you know, you get rejected, like make a connection with that person, see if they can help you out later. You never, you never know. Mm -hmm. You could have been second in line and the person that is getting hired, like decides they don't want the job. Um, 
And because you asked a question and you said, hey, how come I didn't get it? They might be like, hey, man, call, call Eric up, call Michael up. Like, I bet he's still looking. You just never know. That's um, a great point. Yeah. And shotgun your resume out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my can't score right <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> so um and there's a lot of cool places to work out there so um yeah it might not be the one you want right away but you might fall in love with what you're doing so um but yeah I love it. like i said just like a brand don't give up on yourself either like just hey i, I there's a job out there for everyone you know so Excellent. Uh, you know, fantastic responses. I really appreciate it. Very inspirational. Adam, uh, this is really great uh, content, really yeah. great learning for the, for the class. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm going to share your, your LinkedIn with, uh, with the class and uh, yeah, we just really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. So, so thank for you. For so sure. Much. For sure. If you need to have me back, let me know. <laughs> <Will> do. <laughs> All thank right. You guys. Have a good week guys. Bye. Bye.